ready for Time in the World. Time in the World. Time in the Word, presented by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreaches throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. What I'm going to talk about is walking in your true identity. And it just has to do with the messages. I'm not trying to stray far away. My husband's message is called God, Creation, and Mankind. And, and then George spoke last week, and it was called, okay, you had a sophisticated title. It was called, say it, George, Identification to transformation yes so we're all staying in that same vein of identification you know we all we all have families and we identify with our families and our loved ones and you know people proud of their families they're like yes in this family this is how we are we all think like this and these are the accomplishments we have made did you guys have you guys had that kind of thing with your families, because they want you to be proud of your family and your roots. And some of us, you know, it's always a couple nuts up each tree. So, you know, if you got some bad nuts, it's okay, because everybody does. But this, in this case, though, what we're talking about is our identification in God. And so my husband's been sharing with everybody about what took place and, and that's his part. My part is totally different. He gets, he gets into that real deep, the theological part of it and how God formed man up and did something and something. And all that's necessary. All that's, all that's a part of what we need. And then George came along and he kind of broke it down more, but he started to bring a little bit more of that practical stuff in. But he still has. He got some of that too. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He got some of that preachy thing. So he did the preaching thing. So I listened to it so I could, I could make sure I was not like all somewhere totally away from where all y'all were. So I, I listened to it. And, um, and then I just said, you know what? I think my part after hearing his is when I got more revelation of where I was going to go with mine. So, you know, if somebody, and it's kind of like how God wants us to look at life, like every joint supplies. And you don't have to be in competition. The joints don't have to compete. Can you imagine if your eye was competing with your foot? <laughs> and so your eye was trying to see how far it could look, and your foot was trying to outrun how far the eye could look. So the foot is like, oh, how far can you see? And, and the eye is like, oh, I can see like two miles down the road. And the foot's like, well, I can run two miles. So then the foot wants to outdo the eye. I mean, you guys know that sounds, now y'all know that sounds silly, right? Does that sound kind of crazy? Okay, but imagine if the body of Christ, if one joint is supplying and then the other joint has another supply, but instead of them adding to each other, they're competing. This is what goes on with people, period. And, and when people compete, it's usually because you have the wrong concept of how much God can do. You have the wrong concept of God because God is so vast that he needs every joint to supply. There is no such a thing as your joint supplied and God ran out of stuff for me. See, it's not like if you do yours, then God's going to be like, oh. so what am I going to do with this over here, because this person over here, 
did it themselves. Okay, maybe they did it there, and maybe they got to do what they got to do, but that doesn't mean God runs out of stuff for you. Because he cre- the way he created you is so different than that other person. The only rival you have is who? Yourself. And you run your own race. And your identification should be in God and what he has created you for. And, the, and when you fulfill who he created you to be, then I get blessed. See, I get blessed when you walk in your authentic self. Because the authentic you is created to be a blessing to others. Now, when you're, when you're like competing and trying to be something that's not really you, then that's when it drains all of us. Everybody gets drained from that. When you see somebody just, you know, they, they try to do it just like this person, they try to be just like this person, they compete with this person, and if that person talks a certain way, then they start talking, nah, da, you know, they're just, and, and they're just, they haven't found themselves. They don't know how to find out what God put in them. And the greatest joy will come when you walk in your authentic self and what God has called you to. So because George covered a lot of things that I feel like I don't need to cover now, so you guys can just listen to the tape, listen to all my husband's messages, because I'm just going to get practical on you tonight. I'm not going to have any of the theological whatever. I mean, it's all of his Bible. But I'm going to talk to you now about how do we just walk in our identity without becoming selfish? How do you walk in your identity without focusing on you? You know, God didn't call us to selfishness. He called us to selflessness. And so how do I take care of me? Now think about it. How many of you guys wake up every day and you think, I don't want to think of myself. I just want to be a blessing to others. So therefore, I'm not going to take a shower. (laughs) How many think like that? I'm not going to brush my teeth. I'm not going to comb my hair. I'm not going to take a shower. I'm just going to be raw. Because the less time I spend on me, the more I can give to you. Now, does that sound crazy to you guys? Yeah, it sounds crazy to me, too, because now here you are trying to fellowship with somebody, and you got to stand about two miles away (laughs) because um, they didn't think about themselves. And so, obviously, the Bible tells us that you're to love your neighbor as yourself, (laughs) right? Love your neighbor in a healthy way. There's a healthy love that you should have for yourself. And in, 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 in that healthy love, that's when we take a shower. That's why sometimes we have to tell somebody, I don't have time to talk right now because I got to go get with God. That's caring about others. When you say, I got to get my time with the Lord, when you say, I have to spend time in the Word, it's because I can't be a blessing to you if I haven't been in the Word. I can't be a blessing to you if I haven't been with God. I can't be a blessing to you if I don't go before God regularly and repent. Because things start piling up when you don't repent. Does everybody get that? When you, don't, when you don't walk in repentance, it piles up. It's like this little thing, and then this little thing, and then, and then this, and then this. And then you look up one day, and it becomes your character. And then you're comfortable with it. And then you start saying things like, well, you know, it doesn't bother my conscience. And maybe it doesn't bother your conscience because you haven't been sensitive to sin. So see, it's so many things that we need to take care of ourselves in order to bless others. There are things that we need to do. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time today to think about yourself for a while and not think that that's selfish, okay? So I want you to start off by thinking... And, and the scripture that I had from the very beginning was because my husband started out with creation. I just thought, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, before the earth was created, guess what? In the beginning, it had to be who? 
God because God is the only one that created something out of nothing. So in the beginning was not you. Who was in the beginning? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So it was, it's not you, and so I want to put it in perspective. It's not in the beginning you. It's not in the beginning your spouse. It's not in the beginning my kids. It's, it's not in the, in the beginning my job. It's in the beginning who? So everybody say that with power. I mean, you can't say God like God. I mean, this is God, almighty God. So let's say it together. In the beginning. God. In the beginning. God. Not who? Not me. I'm not the center of the universe. I am not to be the center of my universe. God is the center of my universe. So when I wake up, my first thoughts Need, I need to practically learn how to train my mind to think about God when I wake up. And I think sometimes because people talk about God, they actually worship the wrong God, like deity or um, those who worship gods. But we worship the living God. Amen. And so we can be thankful, we can praise God that we found the living God. Let's give him praise that we found the real God. Thank you, Lord. Because, see, there are so many people out there that are worshiping the wrong God. And they think they're right. They're, they're Buddhists, you know, Mormons, Muslims, all kinds of people out there wasting so much time. And they put so much energy into it. They put more than us sometimes. I mean, they got three times a day that they do these, all these different things that they do. And God tells us, I just want you to have a relationship with me. I want you to know me. I am the almighty God. He is the El Shaddai. He is the God who's more than enough. He is, he is Yahweh. You know, I, I heard somebody talk about it the other day, and they were just like, when you say Yahweh, it actually sounds like you're breathing in and breathing out. And see, when you, when you go, Yahweh, okay, because there, 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 were no, there were no vowels in between when you say God. And see, in the, uh, the Hebrew, they, they didn't even speak his name because his name was so awesome and so untouchable that they didn't speak his name. God allows us to speak his name. But there, there, was no, there were no uh, vowels in the middle, so it's, it's kind of like, like you breathe out like <sighs> So Yahweh was more like and you're like breathing in and out. And see that's what God did when he when he birthed us. He breathed into us life. And so when you come before him, take some time to just say Yahweh. But I just have that, that quiet time. Sometimes we're scared of meditation because we think meditation is weird, but the right kind of meditation is great. Just to have quiet time with God and just say, Yahweh, Yahweh. Because before Jesus was revealed, there was God. There was Yahweh. See, Jesus came like years later. But, I mean, Jesus always was. We all know that. Jesus is the word of God, and Jesus always was. But I'm talking about him manifesting as a person on this earth. That came years later. So don't forget the Godhead. Don't forget God. Sometimes when I talk to people, people are so turned off to Christianity because they, because they have the wrong concept. They're not even rejecting the real God. They're rejecting something they don't understand. So sometimes if you're talking to someone and the first thing you go is, Jesus loves you, and they have the wrong concept of Jesus, you could turn them off. Sometimes you need to say God and then, and then explain that, that Jesus is the son of God. But, but it's, not a, it's not like that's, God is not a bad word. <laughs> sometimes we're scared of the word God because people worship 
all kinds of gods. So we think if we don't say Jesus right away, then, that, but sometimes you need to just say, you, did you know that there's a God that loves you so much? He created you. And if you're having problems in life, he, if you have a relationship with him, he will walk with you and, and take you through life and teach you and direct you. Did you know that you were created by something much greater than just having been birthed by your mom and dad? Did you know there's a God out there that is watching over you all the time? And then, and then sometimes, and I'm not saying all the time, but I'm saying there are times that you can approach it like that, and then you can tell people, and he sent his son, Jesus, and Jesus came and walked on the earth, and Jesus is a part of that Godhead. You know, and then you can explain it to them, but I think sometimes we kind of throw aside that God in the beginning was God. And there's God the Father, there's God the Son, there's God, there's God the Holy Spirit, but they're all God. So let's practically, in order to have that identity in God, you're going to have to, in order to identify with somebody, you got to know the person you're identifying with. Sometimes we're like, oh, I'm my, my identity, and it turns all into all about your identity. No, your identity in God. So you want to wake up and talk to God, the almighty God. Look at scriptures that shows how vast he is, how great he is. Look up, you know, just get in the word and see the goodness of God, how good he is. Sometimes we say crazy things because we forget that he's good that everything righteous and good came from him. Uh, I was talking to a brother a few days ago, and, you know, some of the things that I've gone through and stuff, he's just like, I don't know why you're not mad. And I was just like, I couldn't even get the stupid grin off my face. <laughs> when he said it, he was just like, I don't know why you're just not mad. You ought to be mad. I'm like, I, I can't be mad. I wasn't mad. And I'm saying, I don't ever get mad. I get mad. But I wasn't mad because I was just like, if I go through something, God knows and God sees, and there's nothing that he's not going to recompense. And there's nothing he doesn't see. So what am I going to be mad about? <laughs> Do you guys understand? Because you're looking at it like, this, we're not talking about somebody that can't do what he says he's going to do. He can do. He can take care. He can... <laughs> you know, I mean, with the snap of a finger, when them people came to kill Jesus, Jesus, Jesus wasn't like, oh, no, what are we going to do? I mean, Jesus said, it, it would be nothing for me to just, like, in the snap of a finger, all of you jokers would be laid out on the ground. But because I'm yielding to the will of the Father, I'll let y'all have y'all's way. So come do your thing. Because I'm going to rise again, but, you know, go on, do what y'all think you need to do. <laughs> and see, that would be our attitude, but Jesus was connected to God. He was connected to the Father. And so when he laid his life down, he knew this is not permanent. Ain't nothing permanent about this. In fact, in three days, I'm going to be up and out of here, and I'm going to bring mankind with me. So Jesus knew I've got the victory already. I'm not trying to get it. And see, if we would be like him, if we would put our identity in our big brother and say, Jesus didn't walk around like he was depressed. And he was going to go through something heavier than any of us could even imagine. But did he walk around depressed? Did he walk around like, oh, no, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I'm not married yet. Can you imagine Jesus talking about, I didn't get a chance to have a mate. Bummer. Why? He was a man. You think he wasn't a man? You don't think he had desires? You don't think he had hormones like y'all? But he knew something so much greater. And he knew that his purpose did not include a woman. He was like, what I'm called to I can't get distracted. I can't be laid up the night before I go to the cross. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that would be a distraction. It's going to take everything in me to walk this walk. 
and to, and to do what I'm called to do. I can't have any of that going on. I got to stay focused, focused. And, I'm, and there's nothing wrong with marriage. I mean, and it doesn't mean the married people are less anointed and loving Jesus. But he knew his purpose. And when he came to this earth, he kept his focus on his purpose. And if you know you have a purpose, you won't have all these distractions and this over here. How come they got to do that? They got to do that because maybe that goes with their calling. Or maybe they're in disobedience. Whatever. You're not walking out their salvation with fear and trembling. You're working out your own. So work your own out. How many of y'all know it ain't work? It's a lot of work working out your own. Raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know that's a full-time job. Is to work out your salvation with who? Fear and trembling. So this is where my heart is right now, is to talk about, let's, let's just look at what it does to us when we go astray from who we are. You know, there's this thing right now called, called um, identity fraud. And I've, I've had to deal with it. This was something that I've, somebody has gotten my information and made purchases, and all of this stuff starts coming in to me, and the collection agents are sending me all these notices, and I'm like, I didn't buy none of this stuff. I don't even know what this, I don't know who you are. I don't know who that company is. I don't know anything. So I've had to put hours into dealing with all of that, and I'm like, Lord, why am I dealing with this stuff? But if anything, you know, the devil, what he means for evil, I'm going to turn around and use it for good. So I'm like, oh, so the devil, he wants to steal my identity. And I'm like, oh, I see. He would like to just come and have, actually what this person, what these people do is more than one. They take your identity and they pretend they're you. And then all these bills end up going to you. But see, the devil comes to do what? Yeah, and he is the biggest identity fraud person that I know of, where he can steal our identity if he thinks he can. But we have to know who we are. We can't let him take from us. And so I had to hold on to, look, I know who I am. I didn't buy none of that stuff. And I had people calling and arguing with me about it and trying to get me to just they, they came back and said, no, you did do it because nobody else could have had that information. And I said, no, I did not do it. And I, I'm not dealing with this. So the final thing, and y'all pray for me, please, because um, I'm going to call back Monday. And the lady finally told me, she said, you know what? She said, it's very clear that this is a case of identity fraud. And so she said, I'm gonna, and, and it's messed up my credit and everything. And she said, I'm going to um, I'm going to call the company and I'm going to talk to them and, and ask them, can they just take all of this off of your uh, off your credit history? And she said, and she says, they have done this before. And so she said, I, um, get back with me on Monday. So I'm going to be calling her back on Monday. Please, y'all pray. Pray. Because. Because I felt like I've taken all this time. My credit history was excellent. Um, the only thing that, that is not totally excellent on my credit is on my credit report would be um, just, a, just, just things like, you know, changing. I didn't know when you don't use cards, because a lot of times if I get a card, it's because there's a, a sale. <laughs> Y'all you, you know what I'm talking about. They tell you if you buy this, especially Christmas time, they tell you if you get this card, you can get such and such a percent off, and blah, blah, blah. So then I'll get the card knowing that I don't want to use it. And then I might use it two or three times, and I'll be like, oh, I ain't using this thing no more. So, but the, I didn't know you're supposed to close it out if you're not going to use it. So, so I have a whole bunch of open something that I'm not using, and that's the only thing that brought my credit down. Everything else stayed excellent. So I'm like, I took all this time trying to have excellent credit, I have an excellent credit history, and then somebody going to come in and steal my identity and try to act like I made all these purchases and didn't pay for them? And I was like, no, uh-uh, devil, you are not going to take my identity. You're not going to steal who I am. And see, this is what the devil tries to do in our lives. He'll come in your life 
and try to make you think you're not who you are. Oh, yeah. He'll come, and, and you'll do something stupid. All you got to do is one stupid thing, and, he's, and then he will taunt you and haunt you with that thing and try to make you at nighttime, especially, lie in the bed and think that you're this other picture and you're not who God says you are. So we have to beware of identity fraud, and we can't open the doors, and we cannot let the devil steal who we are. Amen? So anyway, we're going to get in here tonight. I'm going to give you all a couple more scriptures. I'm not going to be long, but I want to encourage you guys to fight that good fight of faith and know who you are and, and, and hold on to who you are. And no matter what you see around you, don't let that distract you. Don't let that take you over here or take you over here. Keep your focus on him. Amen? And that's not easy to do because, you know, I started thinking about it. I was like, well, you know, if everything is just even and it doesn't matter, suppose somebody's working a job and they thought they were the one that was going to get promoted to a position and then someone else takes that position. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW1314, that is tape offer number TITW1314. Hi. You know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word? That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.